G'day folks, today I'm going to do a bit of show and tell and uh, what I've got is I've got three knives off to the side here. The first one, that's an Australian Army, oh, that's an Australian Army clasp knife. Next, I better make sure I get this in the picture. That's a Mark II, a Gerber Mark II survival knife. And the third one is they call this a US Air Force survival knife, but it's actually, I think, a US Navy pilot survival knife. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but I'm sure you don't really want to look at my face, so let's have a look at some knives. I joined the Australian Army in 1975, and as a young soldier, the first big exercise I went on was up north in Queensland at uh, Task Force Headquarters, and that was quite a quite a place, like a city, a tent city it was, but uh, I was billeted in my World War II US Army tent with five other guys. Two of those guys were riggers, uh, antenna guys, and uh, one of them had two knives, a uh, Gerber Mark II and a US Air Force survival knife, and I thought they were pretty cool knives. So as soon as I got back to Melbourne, where I was posted to, I went into the city to an army disposal store and actually bought these two knives. I liked them that much when I saw them in uh, Queensland. The first knife I'll talk about is this Gerber Mark II. Uh, I only used this a couple of times on short exercises and um, it, it's not a super practical knife. It's more of a fighting knife than anything else, I reckon. Um, I think with these knives, notice how it um, kind of goes in a little bit in here. I think that became a bit of a problem for them and people, I believe, were complaining that they were actually breaking, but I don't know how that could happen. Anyway, they're a little bit thinner there. I think the later models had more meat to them. They were It was a straight blade rather than that sort of going in a little bit. This knife on the serial number, if I turn it over, you can't see the serial number, I'll see if I can put a still in. Um, dates, I did a Google search ages ago and it dated to about 1974 but uh, I tried to do a Google recently but couldn't find the same same page. Now you'll notice a little bit of yellow paper there. I've, I, when I first got this, I liked it that much that I took it to an engraver and I got my name and army number engraved in it, which of course I didn't realise at the time, but these knives now are worth quite a bit of money. However, a place that sells these as a collector's item told me that unless uh, I was like a special forces soldier, um, the knife would be pretty well worthless, but uh, guess what, but that would be a story for another day. The, uh, the sheath, as you can see, is still in fairly good nick, of course, and uh, it did have leather thongs or a leather, leather rope, I suppose, for tying around your leg, and there was also one in the handle as well, but uh, I have them somewhere, but I honestly can't find them. Anyway, that's the Gerber Mark II. Um, I still really like this knife and I keep it in a glass cabinet in the house. Um, this guy is a US Air Force survival knife, but I did uh, Google search on these to find out more about this knife and how authentic it was. And it uh, turns out that they're more, they were known more as a US Navy pilot survival knife. Uh, look. I'm happy to be um, corrected on this if I'm wrong. I used this knife a fair bit, as you can see. The sheath took a bit of a hammering, but uh, that's what happens to leather and weather. Now, when it, when I first got this, the sheath was uh, a light tan colour, but I used a leather dye to dye it because it just stood out too much in the bush. It still has its original Chapman stone that goes into that little bit there, goes in there, and uh, I sharpened this knife a fair bit, but at the moment it would be pretty blunt. The knife itself um, 
compared to the actual issue knives, because this certainly isn't an issue knife, because I bought this in a Army Navy disposal store. Um, compared to the issue knives, that there is more of a curve than I've seen on any on the internet from pictures of the actual knives. If it was an issue knife, it would have a serial number either there or on the other side. This one doesn't. But apparently these knives were so popular that units of the US military used to get them made under contract for the guys because there just wasn't enough of them. The government couldn't supply enough of them. They were so popular. And uh, most of them, I believe, were made in Japan. But uh, still really good steel. As I say, this one's taken a bit of a beating in its time. The point is gone. It's just the little point's gone off it. And also, if you want to hit something, uh, probably out of focus there, if you want to hit something, you can use the end of it. Now, these also have this um, saw thing here. I don't know whether you can see that. Probably not. It's probably horribly out of focus. But they have a, like a saw blade there. And honestly, it's pretty freaking useless. Um, I was... I read that it was for cutting a pilot out of an aluminium frame, frame which is what aircraft are made of nowadays. It might be successful at that, but I wouldn't want to saw anything else with it. Anyway, that's the uh, US Air Force survival knife, or Navy pilot survival knife. This is an Australian Army clasp knife, and uh, really, honestly, the reason I'm showing this is because I had those, the two other knives, the two survival knives. Uh, this is the knife I probably use the most, even though it still looks in fairly good condition. For the ordinary soldier in the field, the clasp knife is probably the one you use the most. And uh, this one's dated 1973. I just had a look at it and noticed that the blade is definitely blunt. It's had some hard work in its day. but. Uh, I don't have any need to sharpen it. It lives in a drawer up in the garage where I am now and um, it uh, never gets used. One story I have with these class mice, they, they scare the living bejesus out of me because um, when I was a kid I had a pen knife and I actually closed the pen knife on my finger and it uh, cut through my finger and actually chipped my bone. So whenever I get anywhere near these class knife or anything that um, spring shut it still bothers me to this day anyway probably the handiest knife i ever ca I carried when i was in the army that's it for now and if you've made it this far thanks for watching